Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing a noise test comparison for various graphics cards. So I have the graphics cards that I have shown in the previous video, those being my dual RX Vega 64 uh, reference cards, the ones from Sapphire, but they could be from XFX or any of the guys who you can get reference cards from depending on the region or availability. So those will be in there. Um, and then I will be doing GTX 1080 Founders Edition uh, for comparison because the Founders Edition reference card is um, I think a very good comparison just to represent the green team so we have something to compare to and then or objectively in terms of the reference design uh, and then finally I'll do a custom AIB card this one is the Sapphire Nitro Plus Radeon RX Vega 64. So again, it's a Radeon Vega 64 card, but it is uh, a reference, or it's like a custom AIB card as opposed to the stock reference one that I have shown in a previous video. So um, I'm not actually using this one right now. It's just, it's still in the box, um, but uh, we'll, I'll have to take it out. I'll have to probably take apart my Crossfire setup. So I'll do a single card um, with this and then do a noise test on that and then the application that we'll be using for the comparison will be the Final Fantasy uh, 14 Stormblood benchmark it's a long benchmark so it gives the fans a chance to test like the max RPM while gaming and then it does have scene transitions so it will the, the fans have a chance to ramp down slightly then ramp up so you can test the uh, noise signature of like how they've implemented the fan curve. So I'm curious to see like is an AIB card significantly better noise wise and maybe also performance wise as opposed to the reference card because I see a lot of people always recommending that uh, you get the uh, custom cooled card like this as opposed to a reference card but I feel like if you're going to do a crossfire setup like what I've done in the previous video I definitely recommend the uh, blower style reference cards and the same thing goes for NVIDIA as well. I recommend the blower style, whether it's the reference Founders Edition directly from NVIDIA, like what I'm using, or whether it's like an Arrow from MSI or Asus or something like that. So anyway, guys, uh, let's move on to that. We may also do some uh, power consumption testing, and we'll be back here with the results. All right, so here is the noise test for Final Fantasy XIV. So as you see, when I start it up, both GPUs light up. The other one's down there. It just activated because it was in sleep mode. That's why it was not lit up. And you can see the tachometer on both of them has gone max out. So that tells you Crossfire is enabled. So, it's gonna, so this benchmark is going to use both GPUs. All right, so that gives you guys an idea of the fan noise profile. Um, so it's 2400 RPM on both GPUs. 
Um, sometimes it drops back to like 2200 RPM is what I've noticed in the fan curve. Um, and this is with one that has a mesh side panel down here. This this case is the uh, Cooler Master Scal 2. So it's kind of an older case by today's standards. Um, power supply does mount down at the bottom there. Um, it's got these mesh cutouts for you to install like a side panel fan or two of them if you want. Um, but I didn't do that. As you can see, I got the big knock to a D14 cooling the Ryzen 1800X. Um, but if you look at the power consumption numbers here, this is from the wall. Uh, we're pulling about 900 or 600, 400. Okay, we're doing a scene transition, but you'll see it come up here. So that's 800. Let me get some light. All right. All right, so if we look at the power consumption from with the kilowatt from Fry's Electronics, 980 watts. 980 watts. Now keep in mind, this is at the wall. So this this is the power pull from the power supply to power the crossfire setup. So this is the reason why, for those of you saying in the comments, uh, you can run this off of a 850 watt or 750 watt for crossfire no you can't I mean you yes I, I am aware that power supplies can pull more than uh, what they're spec or advertised as doing but it's not a good idea to do that especially long term if you're gonna be doing like an eight-hour gaming session or something so as you can see from this and I'm just running a Final Fantasy 14 benchmark which isn't even that demanding of a game uh, this is 1440p with no frame cap uh, with crossfire enabled so you can see that Vega 64 that's a lot of power that's power similar to the 2080 Ti in SLI or NVLink so that's a lot of uh, electricity um, you can see the cards in there if I shine the light in there you see the glass panel there's the top one and the second one is down there tachometer is fully maxed out uh, if I put my hand at the back of the machine over here yeah, I can feel that heat coming out of there. Both of those cards are exhausting a ton of heat. So that's all that waste heat from all that power. Um, and then those are wanting to know what the power supply looks like. Let me just pull the side panel off here for you guys. And there you go. It's a, it's a Corsair HX1200, as I said. And, and look at that. The Corsair HX1200's fan actually is spinning because we are pulling a lot of power. We are at over 50% utilization on this unit. So the fan, this is a fanless, uh, normally the fan never spins, but when you are running crossfire like I am, you will see those fans, that fan spin. So it's actually having to do work. So that's why I do believe uh, you can probably do a thousand. You can do a thousand watt unit, but see, I just saw it spike over a thousand. Just went to a thousand thirteen. There it is, 1,012. So there you have it, folks. That's why you cannot run Crossfire Vega 64s on a uh, anything less than a 1,000-watt unit. I would not try it. So that's why I strongly believe that 1,200-watt is the minimum to be safe. And this is a quality unit. This is a Corsair HX1200. This is a, a platinum-rated power supply. So it's pretty good. There's only, like, titanium, I think, is the only certification level above that and these are reference cards and on top of that I am using the power save BIOS I'm actually using the secondary BIOS that limits the power to 200 watt per card so that's so both of these GPUs are using 200 watts each so that's 400 watts from the GPU only so you have to take into account the HBM which doesn't use a whole lot but then there's also the VRM and the excess uh, power to the circuitry to the power delivery itself and then on top of that we have the Ryzen 1800X at stock it's not overclocked and 32 gigs of uh, 2933 Corsair Vengeance RAM on an MSI you can see the MSI titanium I don't know if I can reach back there but you can see there's a titanium a motherboard um, so yeah it's getting pretty hot in here so that's why Crossfire is sort of one of those things that if you do it, you're probably going to want to undervolt Vega significantly. 
to save power. Oh, and the benchmark finished. Let's take a look at the score real quick. So there you have it, folks. 14,606. That is at 1440p full screen maximum on DX11. So that's the score. Uh, that's the system. This is what the power usage looks like when idling. So it's relatively quiet. Let me go ahead and save that score. So there you have it. Uh, let's. Is that fan still spinning? I think it has a cool down. Yeah, and that Corsair fan's still spinning. Power consumption right now is down to 160 watts or so. And yeah, if I fill the unit here. Yeah. Oh, and another thing that I will recommend is you guys are noticing that I have the fan facing upward. I prefer to do that because I tend to put my computer, my desktop on the floor, and this is a carpeted floor, so you do not want your power supply to not be able to breathe if you have carpet underneath the case. This thing will be starved for air and it will probably heat up. This is not hot at all though. This is cool to the touch. But the Radeon GPU does feel pretty warm. Especially that top one. Ooh, this one's pretty... That one's quite hot, yeah. I mean, the second one is okay to the touch. This one's pretty hot, though, this top card. So that one's put a lot of work in. But, uh, yeah, you can see that I am using the secondary BIOS, which does limit it to 200 watts. If you use the primary BIOS or the default one out of the box, that one is 200 watts per GPU, so that's going to be, like, 440 watts total. Um, from GPU only power, so that's why I, if you want to do crossfire definitely run it in the power saving BIOS And then you probably want to look at undervolting it um, So but I just wanted to show you guys what an out-of-box Install looks like and what it requires and what the noise figures look like and the power consumption looks like uh, And that's not even playing a super demanding game like Battlefield 5 or anything. So hope you guys found that video useful uh, we will do another one looking at single card power draw here in a little bit, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks.